What movie trilogies are the definition of this meme, where the first one's great, but then the second two are a huge downgrade in quality? I just rewatched the Shrek trilogy, and the first three movies definitely follow this formula, because while I'm not the biggest fan of any of these movies, to be honest, the first one is definitely the best, and is a super solid and really funny film. I know some people absolutely love Shrek 2, I'm sorry, I don't really care for this film at all. It has some very funny moments in it, but everything else in story-wise, I feel like it's a big downgrade from Shrek. Still an okay and solid movie, though. Then you get to Shrek the third, where everything just completely falls off the rails, just lost a lot of the charm and humor that the first two had. The story is easily the weakest, I don't care about anything going on with the story. I could not stand the character of Prince Charming and the whole ending being revolving around this stupid play I feel like it was just a terrible idea it's not as fun to watch as the other two consider yourself lucky I'm only talking about trilogies in this because if I went on to the fourth movie with Rumpelstiltskin oh my god he's one of the most unbearable movie villains I've ever seen in my life but luckily he's not included in this the Hobbit trilogy is another one that starts off extremely strong and then just really overstays its welcome and gets really weak in the second two movies. Which is really a shame because I think Unexpected Journey is really a great film. It recaptures a lot of the magic of the Lord of the Rings universe, but still kind of stands alone as its own thing like the Hobbit book was. It had a very unique feel. Martin Freeman as Bilbo Baggins was an incredible casting and he's so likable in this movie. And I do think An Unexpected Journey is definitely still over long like all of these films are. This one's definitely the most enjoyable. There's just such a great fun vibe around this film, but then sadly in the next two films we try to drag out this story so much adding things that weren't even there in the book not even focusing on Bilbo Baggins as much even though it's named the Hobbit trilogy which is really the biggest mistake this made in my opinion because I'm sorry the desolation of smog is just an unbelievably boring movie for like 90% of it everything with smog himself is good but that's about it and then the third one the battle of the five armies feels like the longest movie ever because it's essentially just fighting scenes for most of it which listen I love a good fantasy battle scene but when it's like 90% of your movie it just really gets old super fast I still just think this should have been one movie instead of a trilogy they were trying to match the epicness of the lord of the rings which it simply was never gonna be because the hobbit is just not that book it's its own thing and the movie trilogy just failed to live up to it in my opinion hopefully they learn their lessons with these movies to make the next lord of the rings movies better because we're getting war of the rohirrim later this year in december which is going to be an anime movie the first screenshots of it look absolutely amazing then we're going to be getting the hunt for Gollum, which is going to be a live action movie and i'm not necessarily thrilled with the idea and kind of taking stories from the appendixes of lord of the rings but hopefully they can make it great it hurts to say it, but the Fantastic Beast trilogy is 100% fitting into this meme template of the first one being the best and then just completely falling off the rails afterwards. Very similar to The Hobbit, in my opinion. The Fantastic Beast first movie kind of stands alone. It has a lot of the elements of Harry Potter that we like, but it feels unique. It's its own world, and it seemed like it was really building something great up. It's not like I think the first one is an absolute masterpiece or anything, but it's definitely a really solid movie that had a lot of potential for the future films. But a lot of things just went wrong with these next couple movies. First of all, I feel like they just didn't have an amazing plan for where to go with these films. They knew they wanted a trilogy but not where the story was actually going. Things like them recasting Grindelwald in the middle of the series also kind of really took away from some of the momentum. I love Johnny Depp as a character. But the biggest thing that hurts this trilogy, in my opinion, is that you can tell with the Secrets of Dumbledore movie, they wanted to keep this open for a fourth one to kind of have a bigger, expansive story and maybe end it with that, or even a fifth one. But after this movie flopped, now it doesn't seem like you're ever going to get that. The story has like a kind of ending, but also doesn't feel fully complete. And it's just kind of in a weird spot. And it's just sad because I really love Harry Potter movies. And since these flopped, now we're never going to get more original stories in this universe. We're just getting things like the HBO remake of the Harry Potter books that we already had adapted into iconic movies. I would really give anything to get a story just taking place in Hogwarts like a hundred years before or something or talking about the founders of Hogwarts or something. Please, anything Warner Brothers, I'm begging you. Don't hate me, but I'm putting the Hangover trilogy into this list because yes, I think the first one is an absolutely iconic and classic comedy movie. It's hilarious no matter how many times I've seen it. And I'm not just going to get up here and lie and say that Hangover Part 2 and 3 don't have any funny moments whatsoever. They definitely do have funny parts in it, but I feel like this idea kind of got played out after the first one and they definitely don't have the same level of humor and jokes as that first movie. Sadly, this is kind of always the case when it comes to comedy movies because they're normally lower budget so they know that they can take the popular one and just keep pumping out things with the same name and it doesn't really matter if the quality lives up to it or not, they're still going to make a ton of money. I feel like this would have just been better left off as a standalone The Hangover and left it at that though in my opinion. Again, put down your pitchforks and let me explain myself. I'm putting the Pirates of the Caribbean trilogy on here. A lot of people wanted me to put it in my last video about perfect movie trilogies. I'm sorry, I just can't do that. Now I think Curse of the Black Pearl, the first Pirates movie, is an absolute masterpiece. It's perfection, it's funny, charming, the action is great it moves quickly it is a masterpiece and this is kind of different from the other ones because i still do really like dead man's chest i don't think it's as good as the first so i think it still fits into this meme template but it's definitely not a bad movie in any ways it's definitely still like an 8 out of 10. It gives us the iconic villain of Davy Jones, still some of the best CGI of all time, and he's just such a great villain and really makes that Men's Chest a better movie than it would be if there was any other villain in it. 
But I'm sorry, I think At World's End is a deeply flawed movie. There are still some of the all-time high moments in this that the first two films have. But I'm sorry, this movie is almost three hours and it has absolutely no business being that long. It overstays its welcome by a clean like 50 minutes. There's just no reason for the story being told to be spread out for this much time. Still give At World's End like a solid six and a half to seven out of 10. I think it's a very solid movie and has great moments in it, but there's just way too much downtime, way too many things that don't need to be in the film. It's a film that easily could have been as good or better than Dead Man's Chest because of some of the moments in it if it was just edited better and cut out a lot of the moments. Again, don't hear what I'm not saying. I don't dislike any of the Pirates movies. I think they're all a ton of fun. I just don't think Dead Man's Chest is quite as amazing as the first one, and I don't think At World's End is even close to as good as the second or first. It's actually kind of crazy how perfectly the Star Wars sequels fit into this meme of starting off solid and then just completely falling off the rails by the end. Because I genuinely still think to this day The Force Awakens is a really great Star Wars movie. It's definitely in like my top six or seven favorite Star Wars films ever. A lot of people have beef with it being like kind of a rehash of A New Hope. I'm sorry, The Phantom Menace also was, and I like my Star Wars stories to feel like a Star Wars story, and this is what it was to me. Built up Rey to be this new interesting protagonist. I like a lot of the choices with how they built up Kylo Ren, having him kill Han Solo, and having a bunch of these moments. I thought that was a really bold choice. It was fun. It has that classic Star Wars adventure feel, and it seemed like a great start to a new trilogy for a new classic Star Wars story. Then with Star Wars The Last Jedi, things start getting a little dicey, and things start falling off the rails a little bit. I still think there's some redeeming qualities in this movie, but there is a lot of problems with it. One of my biggest though is how they treated the character of Luke Skywalker. I'm sorry, again, I don't hate the choice of killing off his character. I think that would be a bold move to do, but the way they executed it was just absolutely not the way to do it. Because I'm sorry, everything with him doing this like force hologram projection thing was just completely stupid. Having that be the reason he dies, or at least partially, it's also kind of like, oh, he was just giving in and now becoming one with the force at the same time. You can tell they already kind of were losing the plot of what was happening. They couldn't really decide on a definitive answer even for what was happening to the characters in this movie. Again, a big problem with just changing directors and the vision of your trilogy midway through. And then we get to the Rise of Skywalker that has just became a complete disaster at this point. It throws away all the good elements from The Force Awakens, especially things like Kylo's character redeeming him. I'm sorry, he should have been the main villain of this entire trilogy. No, we throw that away. It kind of ruins the moment of Han's death. Palpatine coming back does not only ruin this movie and the trilogy that it was building up, it also takes away from moments from the OG trilogy and Darth Vader's ultimate sacrifice. I just still will never forgive them for this. Don't even get me started on things like the Sith dagger, which is just so unbelievably stupid. Like, I'm watching a Star Wars movie. My disbelief is already suspended pretty far, and I'm willing to believe a lot of things are going to show me, but this was pushing it a little bit too far. The entire final battle, or whatever you want to call this, where it's like all the Sith versus Rey being all the Jedi, feels like it was written by like a fifth grader. Actually, I'm not gonna lie, I take that back. A fifth grader could have done better than whatever this attempt was. Really, nobody got a satisfactory ending in this. Like, I don't like Rey now taking up the name of Skywalker. That doesn't feel like a natural end for her character. I liked her being kind of this nobody and not feeling like she needs to take on this name. Finn should have turned into a full Jedi by the rise of Skywalker, but they just kind of shied away from that and kind of teased at it. And they're like, yeah, we're just going to leave that alone and just forget about it because they were scared to put this movie in China with having an African-American lead, which is just really terrible moves from Disney. You get me started on other characters like Rose and stuff that they shoehorned into the story in this trilogy. It's just so stupid and so many bad moments where they went wrong. I'm sorry, George Lucas, that you had to see this, but luckily you got $4 billion out of it, I guess. Let me know in the comments any other movie trilogies, even video game trilogies, or seasons of TV shows that you think follow this formula of starting amazing and getting worse, and make sure to hit that subscribe button for more.